Uh, so if you guys don't mind, I would actually like to showcase a model kit that um, has a has probably the most interesting set of assets <laughs> that that I've had that I have for this episode, and that is uh, all about my Varan kit from M1. Are you guys familiar with uh, with M1? Are you guys familiar with M1, the model kit uh -huh. uh, company? Yeah. Yeah. Normally, we talk about M1 yes, in yes, toys, soft toys. vinyl toys, but Yuji, uh, who is the guy who runs M1, is well known for doing all sorts of the stuff, not just toys. They do books, they do model kits. And so what I wanted to do here is spin a yarn for you. We're going to start things off with the fact that a lot of people out there know that I love Varan. I love the creature design. The movie's not the best, but the monster design for Varan is amazing. And I also, if you're not aware, really love GMK. That is like one of my favorite movies. Godzilla, Mothra, King Ghidra, Giant Monsters All at Attack is so well made. But if you were not aware of this, one of the early drafts of the GMK script called for not... Mothra and King Ghidra to join up with Baragon, but Varan and Angulus. And shortly after the movie came out, fans on the internet saw these images of this Varan and this uh, Angulus sculpt. And it's just like, those two sculpts set my brain on fire. Um, so much so that I actually... I can get this right up there. Oh, no, maybe I can't. It's a little too small. But I, I actually sculpted my own one of these guys. Really? Yeah. Um, so basically, I did this guy. Beautiful. That's pretty awesome. That's great. Wow. You know, it's a, it was using essentially one photo reference piece. I didn't have any Impressive. information about what it looked like on the side. But I entered a contest Sorry. in uh, probably, I think it was 2002, where we basically had a contest on a Yahoo group for, uh, for model kits. Anybody who's in that group would know what I'm talking about. It was called the, um, I think it actually might have been called the Resin Chef competition. But I sculpted this by myself, right? And so I entered it in the sculpt, sculpted category. I thought I was going to win until Bill Goodmanson showed up with his uh, 67 Kong, which was honestly way better than mine. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and move along. So these are the sculpts from uh, for Varan and Angulus, and I have actually been able to see these in person, which is pretty amazing. That's um, great. Before I was able to see them in person, I was lucky enough to visit Yuji Nishimura's house, and I got to actually see his kit that he made, because wow. only one person has ever done anything for this Varan, and it was Yuji, and he made this kit wow. that was sculpted by Fuyuki Shinada, who actually wow. made the suits for the mil for the movie. Wow! Shinada also sculpted all of the M1 releases, so the M1 GMK uh, 2001 stuff, like so Godzilla, King Ghidra, Mothra, and Baragon, all sculpted by Shinada. Anyway, so this this kit immediately caught my eye, and I was like. Um, I have to have this. And the story as it went was I went to Monster Palooza one year and I told Jim Cirinella, and a, I was joking. I said, oh, if Yuji really wants to break the bank for me, tell him to bring one of those Varan kits. Because when I was there, I lost my mind. I was like, oh, my God, I didn't know you made this, etc. So moving right along, uh, let's let's actually showcase just the build itself, right? So the build itself is pretty... Pretty self-explanatory. Luckily, this piece of uh, this model kit only has a few pieces. So it's a large body, a tail, and two legs. Except there is the matter of the spines. And all of mm. the spikes going down the back are all made of resin. And the whole thing wow. is actually made of fib like a fiberglass material. So it's very sturdy. I don't feel like I'm going to break it, but I'm also trying to be very careful with it because this is the most expensive kit that I own. Hmm. Um, now I'm going to pause this right here. Oh, look, there's me. So I'm going to pause the video, and we're going to go back to the images because essentially what I want to show you guys is that once I had the model kit assembled, I needed a little help because um, I have a lot of Varans in this collection, right? 
Uh, yes, you do. I have a lot of uh, X Plus stuff, realistic stuff. There's just so much brown, so mm-hmm. many brown Varan kits or pieces. And I could have gone with a monochrome piece, but you know, to be honest, that's just not my style. I don't like monochrome. So I, I reached out to my good friend David Eric Dopko, and uh, the two of us sort of pow out online about what to do with this kit. And I, I was like, I really want to do something different, and I really want to turn this into a special piece. And so the one thing David said as we were, oh, let me back up one step. So I said, David, you know, the thing I've never really seen is I've never seen a green kit, a green Varon like we've seen in some of these lobby cards. Here's another one for you. And so I was originally thinking this. And David was like, oh, yes, green. That's a great idea. But when I showed him the lobby card, he was like, no, 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 no. That's not what I was thinking. I was thinking more like a statue. <laughs> a statue. And that immediately. Yeah. Yeah. knocked these images into my head of the Shisa dogs at the temples in Japan. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, man, what if I could paint it like one of those? And, you know, in addition to the Shisa dogs, David and I have been to Kamakura to see the Daibutsu, which is a gorgeous, gigantic Buddha statue, all this green color. If you're not familiar with that, with that green color, what it is, is that is a copper statue that over the years has... Uh, a natural patina to it. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing was very intriguing to me. And I was like, well, that's, that's interesting. I've never tried something like that. And so I did a lot of research, started looking at some of the different variations you can see with an actual patina on copper. Um, This image of a stormtrooper Buddha came in very handy as inspiration for me. And then it wasn't until I found this guy on YouTube the Crass Man. And if, uh, if you ever are into this, I'm going to include a link in the show notes too. But if you're ever trying to do a patina kind of thing, his tutorials were great. He actually had several versions. You could sort of see on the bottom, ammonia, vinegar, and salt, vinegar, and salt. These are real ways to patina real metal. Yeah. Not what I'm working mm. with, though, because what I'm working with is a, is a fiberglass material, so I want to paint it. Luckily, the last piece of advice he had was to use these um, these colors from Ranger, and these are not your standard acrylic or oil or whatever. They're actually made for lots of different things. It says for all metal on the actual packaging, but what I ended up doing with this is you layer things up. So you're going to see me spray a black just flat black over everything in that box. I'm doing a few different things, but the Varan kit's going to come in here uh, like full like full center screen kind of thing in a minute. But basically, and so you can see my reference material up on the wall there, up at the garage door, a bunch of pieces that I wanted to use as my inspiration. Okay, so here's how this, this paint works. Essentially, you spray it on with a spray bottle, like the tss, tss kind of spray bottle, and you spray stuff and you wipe it off and you spray a different color and you wipe it off and you just go over and over and over again. And it just, you just keep doing it. And, and at one point you're like, wow, this is looking really cool. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing I do is I'm like, all right, that looks great. Let me just paint all over it black again. And I just kept this process going for a day or two, something like that. Um, it's really the the long run of this project. You're going to see me start doing some detail work in a minute. But basically, the mm-hmm. it was a really cool concept that I would never have even thought of before. Uh-huh. Uh, and the, the fact that it is actually, it is a build-up takeaway process really was intriguing to me. And the the act of wiping away the paint so that you get the paint underneath it, but also uh-huh. the colors underneath that paint. It's deep. I mean, it's a really great piece. I'm a huge I've fan of it as well. Like you, you really created something that it's, it's pretty spectacular and there's, mm. there's nothing you can't say anything other than that. I mean, it, and you know, Kyle, when we first started to talk about this episode, he's like, well, I know, I know you consider yourself a, a modeler, and but I consider myself a novice. I'm like, dude, you put that together 
that is not novice right there. That is some advanced stuff. I mean, that's nothing I've even ever tackled. That's really cool. And I'm very impressed by that piece. And I absolutely love it. Thank you very much, man. Fantastic. Uh, well, that's the, uh, that's the end of the, of the video there. Um, the only other thing I wanted to share with you guys <laughs> is I did post some pictures on Instagram. Uh, so you could see, oh, wait, no, here we go. You can see those spikes. Wow, Every wow. single one of those spikes is on a resin um, oh, sprue, I guess you would call it. And on that clear resin sprue, there are teeny tiny numbers. And you can see in, um, in this image here where my mouse is, there's like little numbers that are associated with the, the kit. It says from here to here is 10 through 14. From here to here is 15 through 20, whatever, you know, wow. you have to get in there and organize things. And so what I ended up doing is uh, I did wear safety goggles, of course, because I was using a Dremel to cut these and I definitely had one whiz right past my face. Wow. So you can see the pill box here on the left-hand side where I numbered each pillbox container piece and i just got that from the dollar store and i put every single spike into wow. its corresponding pillbox uh someone frank says i don't know how you have the patience for this i tell you what it was trying to do this stuff um yeah there's my uh inspiration board essentially here is the piece with the let me see if i can get that bigger the piece with the actual uh the spikes in it and then the finished piece with the spikes before the paint. And so the, the end result of this, if I stop sharing my screen and go to the cam, is this really kind wow. of, wow. you know. It looks I like want, a statue. It's supposed to, it, thank you very much. I really am happy with how it came out. Oh, man. It looks like, Kyle, it looks like it has weight to it. It mm -hmm. looks like it's funny because it actually it, it's a little off off it'll like wobble a little bit. <laughs> wow. Beautifully done. Thank you very much. So this was wow. this was my big piece and I actually really? I had ideas to um, actually put this into a diorama for G Fest last year, but I didn't have the time to do it. So what I'm going to suggest is in the future, why don't we have a diorama episode and I will take that opportunity to put this into the diorama that I want to make it in. I won't even tell you guys what it's supposed to be because it's super dope, but the, um, <laughs> the kit will, I'll, I'll do my best to make that diorama for that episode so that I'll have something to show and I can film it while I'm making it. That's so cool. That's going to be awesome.